Hello. Well, I've had a breakdown, so I need to fix this. It's a Panasonic AG4700 uh, Super VHS deck with the Panasonic K mechanism, and it's not doing a lot at all. But it was working until a couple of days ago, so let's have a look. Okay, uh, I've worked on a number of these machines in the past, but I don't remember if I've worked on this particular one. Let's uh, power it up and put a tape in. And that doesn't feel right. It should have half laced, I think. And if I hit play, nothing happens. So this deck is behaving weirdly. Fast forward, rewind. No, it's ignoring everything. What about eject? No, it's not going to eject. Uh, you can get problems with the loading motor coupling, but when that happens, you hear it making a whirring noise, but that's not what's happening here. Oh. That's very odd behaviour. Don't really know what to make of that. It might be a problem with the mode switch, because that can cause chaotic behaviour. That's my best guess at the moment. That or the loading motor is stalling, but it doesn't seem that likely because when it did eject, it ejected okay. Let's go through that process again. I'm sure it should half lace now, didn't it? Try fast forward from this point. Nothing. And no symbols on here either. Eject. And then it does that weird thing where it stops. And then it ejects fine. Are we going to have a look at the mode switch? I think that's probably the place to start. I uh, can't quite remember where it was on the, is on these decks, but um, it's probably going to mean taking the deck out, which is a bit of a pain. Let's do that, though. Take the front off. The thing to remember about taking the front off is when you put it back, you need to open it before you put the back, the, the front back on. Otherwise, the um, front here gets on the wrong side of the eject mechanism. Okay, that's the uh, front panel removed. The electrical connections are made through these connectors, so you don't have to worry about uh, flexi cables to the front. Right, there's some uh, big deck screws here. And the other deck screw is at the back. But we've got cables to uh, remove before we take the deck out. On some K-mechanism decks there's a transistor here and you have to disconnect it. It's mounted there for cooling. Right a few connectors. I have the deck out. Let's have a look at it. First a quick check that the loading motor is free to move. Yeah. That's fine. The mode switch, which tells the deck where it is, is in here. Uh, let's see if I can get that out. I'll set you up so you can look down on the deck. Now, I have to confess, there will be a proper system in place in the service manual for aligning this um, switch. But right now, I'm just going to know that the machine's in the ejected position. There's an arrow here, and I'm just going to mark on its surround where that lines up with. That will not be the approved way of setting up the alignment, but it will do for now. 
uh, I want to get this switch off and see what it's like. Okay, so there's the mode switch. Underneath here will be a set of contacts and sliders. These contacts here connect to these, and I must say they all look a bit the worse for wear actually, so I'm going to start by cleaning those up. Look at those, they're really dull. Right, let's look inside the mode switch. I've never taken this type apart before and it may not really come apart. The construction here is uh, sort of blobbed, so they've blobbed the plastic down on there. So it's not designed to come apart, it's supposed to just replace the whole thing, but of course you can't get them anymore. So we're going to have to uh, take this bit of plastic off and free it up. Sharp knife, I think. Okay, there is a flat on here, so that secures the alignment of this. Right, we just need to clean up those contacts. And um, looking at them, I would say that the outermost one here is the cause. These look okay, though that could use a little very gentle cleaning, but that outermost track is um, quite contaminated. So the question is, is that bad enough to stop the machine from working? And I would say that in places, yes it is, especially at the top there. That's looking quite grim. So let's clean that up and see if we can uh, get it working again. I've got uh, my deoxit here. Looking on the outside edge here, there's a, a chunk sort of missing. Is it supposed to look like that? Weird. Okay, let's reassemble this. Let's reassemble this. These um, protrusions go on the inside. I don't know what they're for, but they don't face outwards. Okay, that's probably not going to fall off anyway, but I think we'll use a little... Um, epoxy resin to secure that. Right, let's reassemble this. I've got my alignment mark lined up exactly as it was when it came off. So that should be exactly the same. Okay, uh, I think we can refit the deck and give it a whirl. Right, I've not refitted the deck screws because we might have to take it out again, but uh, we'll give it a whirl. I've got the remote because, of course, without the front panel fitted, uh, we won't be able to operate the buttons. Um, I'm going to have to switch this light off because too much light confuses VHS, Super VHS machines. So let's power it up. So far so good. Switch it on. Try to load the tape. That looks exactly the same to me. I don't know. Let's try play. No. It's not lacing up. It's trying to play a tape when not laced, which of course is never going to work. So it's exactly the same. That's um, disappointing and also something of a surprise because I really did think that would have been the mode switch. What could possibly be the problem? I hit eject and it didn't. And then it did. How very odd. Well, it's very disappointing that that didn't work. But you know, I still actually think it could well be the mode switch. So let's see if this helps. It's a scrap machine. 
and it really is well and truly scrap. There's bits missing and all sorts. But maybe the mode switch might be able to help. So what I think I'll do, I'll take the mode switch out of this one, and I'll put it through the ultrasonic tank, but I won't dismantle it. So the ultrasonic tank should clean it up, uh, but there's no reason to suspect it's defective anyway. And then I'll fit it in there and see if it helps. Okay, so this is our um, salvaged mode switch. I'm going to put that in the ultrasonic tank with some cleaning solution. And uh, the, the clue will be, I think, if the tarnished end pads here, the connectors, come up shiny, then it's worked. So uh, let's give that a whirl. Right, there's the uh, mode switch, which has been through the ultrasonic tank. The contacts still aren't spotlessly clean, but better, I think. Um, I've dried it out with air and then applied a bit of uh, switch cleaner, which should hopefully drive out any uh, remaining moisture and provide a certain amount of lubrication for it. So I think we can now try to fit that in the deck and see if it helps. So unfortunately, we've got to go through the entire process of dismantling this again. Now this time we won't get the benefit of my uh, alignment mark that I put in last time, so I'll uh, have to just work it out by copying it across. Right, well I set the uh, alignment to be the same as this one. Um, there were some moulding marks on the casing which came in handy. And when it went in there was no movement in the switch. It went in and sat straight down, so I think I have got it set to the right position. Okay, so it's reassembled with that other mode switch. What do you think? Switches light off. Power up. More strange behaviour, but not good. And I'm not going to be able to eject the tape easily. Ha! Ah. Oh dear. I'm going to have to take the deck out with the tape in it, it would seem. Now because I haven't refitted the screws, including the one that's underneath this cassette, that's not hard, fortunately. I can probably fit the other switch back again. I'm also going to have a look at the mechanism quite closely to see if there's any possibility that something's just plain broken in here. I think I'm going to um, apply a few volts to the motor and see if I can get it to manually lace and unlace and possibly even eject. About 5 volts should do it, I think. I don't know the polarity at the moment. Depends which way I'm trying to go. Doesn't feel right. Try a bit more current limit. It should be lacing and unlacing. There's nothing else apart from the motor that's involved in the deck operation. Let's turn the motor by hand. Trouble is, it's uh, very geared down and it would take an age to turn it far enough to see anything. And I'm seeing something. Look at the scrap deck. It 
there is a serious problem with our target deck. If we look at this sliding mechanism, it goes all the way along here in a straight line. But if you look at our defective one, oh dear, that's a funny angle. That appears to have broken off this. <laughs> so th that should all be one piece. Right, well that's um, not going to be an easy part to change, so I have to decide if it's better to try to build up this deck than repair that one. I know the heads are shot on this, but we can change the heads. Shall we see if we can actually confirm that? Look at this rack sliding component and uh, confirm that it has split. So how do I get to that? under here. I'll put you on so you can look down on it. Right, so here's our broken component. I believe this should all be one straight line from here to here. <laughs> that is spectacularly broken. Can I take this off without messing things up too badly? Now might be a good time to take this loading motor off. Ah, a little tricky because there's a tape stuck in there. Oh dear. You'll know that there's a coupling in here that fails very often. So taking these motors off is something you have to do. Okay, there's the loading motor assembly. So here's the main cam. And there you have the problem. So that has broken off this. Okay, so all that mucking about with the load, the, that switch was irrelevant. This is the problem. I think I will go with switching this over from the scrap deck. I know it's a it's a tough call, you know, which is the best way to go, but I think that other deck has its own faults. So let's uh, swap this over. So that means releasing these clips, I think. The big biggest task, of course, is getting the alignment right, getting this properly set on the cam. Excuse me if I do this off camera because I'm going to uh, use the microscope to uh, help me just ease these clips off. Right, I need to be careful to get the alignment correct when I fit the other one between the three teeth on here, I think it's about three, and here. So that's our target deck. Here's our donor deck. Normally squeeze these clips together here to take the motor out, but obviously it was a little bit difficult with the uh, cassette being in place on the other one. I know it's possible to get the cassette out anyway. Okay, this is the sliding mechanism need to take off. I'm still a little bit worried about the alignment of these arms relative to this to the rack, but. I'll have to tackle that later. Right. We have everything we need now. 
My biggest problem now is going to be retiming it, so I will have to refer to the service manual. Right, I think I've got the um, deck mostly lined up here. I've still got to refit the cassette carriage and a few other parts on here. Uh, I thought this would be one of those moments where I refer to a fantastic video by uh, 12 Volt Vids or Michael Dranfield or somebody who knows these decks inside out and can tell you how to set all the timing up. But uh, there is no such video, so... Uh, uh, I'll show you what I've learned. Uh, what I'll do is I'll set you so you can look down on it and we'll point out some of the alignment points. Right, firstly I'll show you the part that broke. So uh, that was what caused my failure. I mean in theory maybe I could have glued that back together but since I had a replacement it wasn't uh, worth the risk. So that was the failure. The parts that I've presently not refitted are the capstan belt here and that's also got this roller and this is a brake for the capstan so that fits there and the belt goes along here but I'll refit that later because I want to show you a little bit more first and of course the other items I've not yet fitted are the loading motor which goes that way around there and I'll mention it one more time there's a coupling in there that fails all the time it's been replaced in this one already and of course the other thing that needs to go back on is the whole PCB at the top but first we need to make sure that we have all the alignment points set up properly so the uh, alignment points um, are set up with it in the what it calls cassette down number one position and so this uh, the main cam gear here is set so that there's a, a small arrow in there I hope you can see it there's a small arrow there which should point to the second cam gear here which has a um, blob with a hole in it and those two are set to line up so you see that in the diagram the diagrams aren't that clear but there is a arrow on the main cam gear and right there that's sort of a boss with a hole in it and they line up just set you up a little bit so you can see that alignment I was talking about between the main cam gear and the sub cam gear so there's the arrow on the main cam gear and there I think you can just about see uh, a hole or a boss with a with a hole in it uh, which needs to line up with that arrow on the sub cam gear when you've got the main cam gear in that position the mode switch should point with the its arrow in this little notch in the side of the case there's one more alignment point which won't have been disturbed in my case which is further on in here I think underneath it might be underneath the capstan motor uh, between the this main cam the secondary cam gear and the next gear along let's have a quick look at that so this is a sub cam gear this one I believe so that's the next alignment point here between that hole and that hole there's another alignment point under here for the pinch cam gear which is the big tall one on the other side which uh, drives the pinch roller up and down but that alignment won't have been upset in my case because I've just been replacing this so the alignment between this and the main cam gear will already be correct there's no alignment for this that just plops on which is just well because it falls off quite easily so I'm making sure that arrow is in there 
and this arrow points with this dot, then we need to go through and make sure that uh, all the levers are properly set. So, oh, another thing that's it's even more important before we worry about the levers is getting the uh, loading arm set properly. Now, the loading arms in my case, they should have been aligned perfectly with each other, but actually they did fall off at one point, so I had to check that. Um, in the diagram, it does show you how to set the loading arms up. They have uh, an alignment marker between the two. Uh, this is the take up and this is the supply. So T and S, they call them. So you get those two lined up with each other. And then when we're in this position, this, this number one setting that we have uh, with that and this, then we should have this arrow here lined up with this arrow here on the take-up arm, the take-up um, loading arm. So when we've got those two lined up, then we have this, this slide and the supply and take-up arms correctly configured. So all we have to do then they're, the, they're all the arrows that we have to line up, but we need to make sure all the levers are in place because there's lots of sliding levers throughout this. Uh, let's look at those. So there's a connection lever here. Is that not quite right? Because that looks like it's able to slop under here. So that looks like maybe something's not quite right, doesn't it? I'm not happy with that. Okay. We'll have to find out what's wrong. There's a, there's a lever under here which must be jamming and pushing the slide up. Because that's not... That should be held there. But it's free to, to get underneath, so there's something wrong. See my problem? Why is this not sitting down properly? Okay, we'll have to look at that in a moment. This, I think, is called SP5 post, and that's in the off position. That's correct, because it's sitting in there. It shows in the diagram as like an L-shaped slot, because it travels under here. The one over here, which is the... We've got a review arm post, which slides into here. Right, so this post slides in here. We have one of the circlips mounted here. There's a tension arm post under this part. This is the idler fixing lever, I think. There's one under here which is called the take-up soft brake post. Maybe that's what's not sitting properly. And it's pushing this up. So let's find out why that's too high. Because this is not sitting down properly. When I push it down, everything looks right. But it shouldn't be bending up like that. Well, I've just cycled it and it seems to be correct now. It might well be the thing that's supposed to be pushing this down is this one. So let's install that. That's looking correct. So let's install the uh, belt. And the loading motor. Right, I think we have everything lined up here. We still have to fit the cassette carriage, for which there is another alignment. So let's fit the PCB. Now, for installing the cassette carriage, we need it in a different configuration. We need to get this back over to where my marking was, if you remember, when I changed the switch, I had a marking over there. Should have done this before I fitted the PCB. There's no motor drive electronics on this PCB, so I can safely power this board, this motor. 
and get it into the required position for inserting the carriage. Not sure the polarity, we'll soon find out. Not that way, the other way. There we are, eject. Now we're start, not there yet. This alignment mark here, we've got two dots and an alignment mark. And they should be, as shown in the diagram, uh, not in a terribly helpful position. Wouldn't you think they'd make it so that you could easily see the alignment marks? So, no, it needs to go further around. I seem to have a problem that the loading, the, the front carriage gear is not rotating. So something's not quite set up right. My problem seems to be at the moment that I am not this uh, cassette carriage gear is not uh, engaging when it should. So I need to investigate what's happened there. I need to work out why when I move now uh, further into the unlaced position here, why it doesn't start to drive the uh, front carriage gear. So that's all good, lacing up is all good, but when it gets to this reference point here and then goes further, this should engage and it's not. So something's not right here at that point. There we are, that's working now. I think it just needed to be engaged. <laughs> All right, so what I need to do, leave it in a zero position, but when I start to turn that, I have to turn this by hand and then fit the cassette carriage. Fit the cassette carriage now, I think. Right, okay. So they give us this diagram here, showing this hole, there's two holes and a, and a slot slot up there, one hole down here, one hole here. That's what we need. That's our alignment point right there. Right, now we need to put this on with the second tooth, the peak from the second tooth sat in there. Now you can kind of see the tooth through this small plastic hole here. God, they could hardly have made it any harder, could they? But there's no point at which you can really see it. Kind of look down there and you can kind of see it in there. Yes, that is correct, I think best as I can see that is in. So let's fit the uh, carriage screws. Okay, I think the carriage is now properly fitted. So I can fit the top plate, which I'd removed earlier, but I dare say wasn't absolutely necessary. I've got the top plate on. I'm getting into the jet position having manually defeated all these uh, traps for driving it with no tape. Now I can drive it back to that uh, reference position. Back to the reference position now. The cassette down one where the cassette is indeed down and we have that arrow lined up with that hole so we can fit the mode switch in its reference position which is the arrow pointing into this slot. Right, I believe it's all aligned. We fit the loading motor. Be careful to get these little pegs to go down into the hole here. These little pegs here have to go into the hole in the deck otherwise you crush them. And you need to pop these clasps over that post like so now dot the screw fit the PCB 
I think that's uh, ready to fit and test. If you're uh, in this position of having to take the deck out to uh, realign it before you refit it, while you've got it all out, go through the connectors here looking for dry joints. Extremely common dry joints around the head drum connectors. And you get problems that look like clogged heads, but it's actually losing contact with the head uh, the head windings. So resolder all of these, look at them with a the microscope. You may have to take the PCB off to get at the ones that are under this metal bar here because they can be the ones that fail actually along here. And here you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So there's uh, that contact there, that top one. That top contact there is quite obviously a dry joint. You can see by all the cracking around here. So uh, that and all the others don't look that great either. All needs resoldering or you will get intermittent problems later. Okay, I believe we're at the point we can uh, reassemble it and uh, see if the mechanism works. Okay, I've assembled everything. Let's uh, power it up. That looked entirely correct. Put a tape in. Select play. That looks right. Let's uh, connect it to a monitor. Looking good. Eject. Excellent. Power it down. We need to remember there's a sequence to reassembling the front. You must open this open that and assemble it in that way. Otherwise you can get it into a mess. <laughs> okay, so let's confirm that that's working. It's not taking commands, so presumably I have something not quite lined up here. Try that again. That's better. Right, and check eject. Brilliant. Okay, I've uh, refitted the screws. So these screws here for the uh, head amplifier, and you could argue you don't need to take that out, but because it's so hard to get this cable out of uh, that connector, uh, it's, it's kind of the done thing. So uh, that cable sort of requires that you remove the head amplifier. Uh, the three screws have gone back into the deck. There's one there, one about here, and one at the front. One, I can't quite get it on the screen, but there's one about there. Just in there. So, let's just demonstrate the functions. That's in cassette in mode, so we hit play. That's playing. Fast forward. Back to play. Reverse picture search. Back to 
Back to play. Pause. Right, I hit stop and then fast forward. So this would be in full fast forward mode. Takes a few seconds and then it goes to full fast forward. Stop and rewind. Again, it starts slow and then speeds up. And then eject. All in good working order. Well, I hope you found that interesting. It's certainty well worth fixing these uh, AG4700 and other Super VHS machines that have got a built-in uh, time-based corrector. Uh, so the whole fault was caused by failure of this slide which had snapped there. Uh, I think the other thing I should mention in passing is this idler which drives the, uh, the, the reels and if the friction surface in there starts to wear, it can uh, not give you enough torque that it gets into position properly. Uh, so it might be worth taking this apart and roughening up the surfaces inside if you're having problems with fast forward and rewind not working reliably or picture search uh, creating loops of tape. It can be that. Well, I hope you've learned something from this. I certainly did. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.